It's real talk. 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 Yeah. Welcome to real talk. 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 It's real talk. It's real talk. It's real talk. And here we go. Here we go. On this Monday, it is the 30th day of May, Memorial Day. And this is the uh, Real Talk Memphis. And all new, what I was trying to say was that this is an all new live edition of Real Talk Memphis, which is on the air. 6 p.m. on this beautiful Monday. Uh, temperatures in the upper 80s, well, 90 actually, probably about 91, 92. Nice day, glorious day. And uh, right off the top, I want to say happy Memorial Day uh, to all of uh, our service folks out there, the ones uh, who in particular sacrificed their lives uh, for us. Uh, your service is not forgotten, and we will always remember you, and we thank you for everything that you have done. So happy Memorial Day. Now, I hope that uh, many of you got a chance to uh, enjoy it in whatever way it is we enjoy days like this. For me, it's like eating and, and like resting and getting ready for this show. Um, we have a good show for you tonight. Speaking of, we, you know, I think I have some pretty good guests this evening. We're going to talk about a variety of things. Uh, my first guest in just a few minutes is uh, Justin Johnson. Now, it's not lost on me that uh, this is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, and we have seen um, a lot of issues coming or stemming from uh, mental illness. And I wanted to have a conversation about this. And I didn't want this month to go by uh, before we had a conversation. So we'll be talking to Justin Johnson uh, about that in just a couple of minutes. Later on, uh, we're going to uh, delve into the world of rodeo, particularly the Black Rodeo, which was here a couple of weeks ago in Tunica, Mississippi. We're going to talk to a professional rodeo announcer. His name is uh, Marcus Friday. And I look forward to having a conversation uh, with him about uh, not the resurgence of black, uh, ro the black rodeo, but the increasing interest of it around this country. So that's going to be kind of fun. And a little bit later on, the next uh, fellow you, uh, that we're going to talk to is someone who is not afraid to give his opinion, not afraid to have a thought, not afraid to share his thought. His name is D. Otis Sanford. He'll be on uh, the second half hour of the show. But first things first, you're asking yourself how to get this fine piece of radio broadcasting. Well, a number of ways, 91.7 FM right now, live. We are also on the WYXR app live. You can catch us on the TuneIn app. If you're out and about doing your thing, put in WYXR in the search and you'll pick us up. We also have a little thing called Facebook Live that we do and uh, we'll post to YouTube a bit later. And you can also catch this show when it is posted tomorrow wherever, say it with me, you get your podcast. Uh, so um, we're loaded up and we're ready to go. Nicole is here. Lola is here. Shelby's here. We're all just you know, having a good time on this Monday. Now, uh, May has been a big birthday month. And uh, you know how we like to do it on this show. We like to celebrate this recent trip around the sun that you made. But we can't do that until I say, hit it, Lola. Happy birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a birthday Monday, Memorial Day, 2022. Happy birthday is going out to Vaughn Moody. Mike Jones is celebrating a birthday today, as is Lena Luckett. Happy birthday to Aletha Baptist, to Dion Loki Denton. Henry Cousins celebrating today, as is Dustin Smith. Chandrika Winston former colleague of mine at MLGW celebrating her birthday today. Sandra Bland is celebrating as well. Cynthia Colbert, Marcus Taylor, Regina Webster, and last but not least, tomorrow, a member of the WYXR radio family and host of a show called Riverside, Ron Buck, celebrating his birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday, Ron. Happy birthday. Ooh. Oh, yeah, Lola screaming from the board. Marsha, 
Baker. So, Marsha, glad you got in under the wire. Happy birthday to each and every one of you and all you May babies out there. Here's hoping we're back here next year where we can once again celebrate your trip around the sun. Thank you, Lola. So, we have a lot of uh, news to talk about. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I told, uh, told the folks before the show, I got an up close and personal view of the nuttiness that goes on in this town, especially on the highways. And I was coming down here, down Sam Cooper, got to Parkway, started to turn left. Our light was green. We had the arrow going left. And all of a sudden, some folks coming down Parkway from the other way uh, were, were zigzagging in traffic. I mean, they were, they didn't, they ignored the light. I literally missed hitting somebody by six inches. There was a guy sitting in the window, hanging out the window, you know, as this car was going zigzagging back and forth. This town is crazy. There's, there's, too, there's too much nuttiness that goes on around here. And it is, it's literally going to hell. I'm, I'm serious. I, when I see things like that up close and personal, not to mention the 13 people that got shot this weekend, which is becoming standard here in Memphis, Tennessee. 13 sh people shot since Saturday and two deaths. So what else is new? Um, last uh, week, we are all still processing 21 people at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas, that were killed at the hands of an 18-year-old gunman. Uh, 19 children and two teachers uh, at this school were, were slain, were assassinated by this kid. Uh, he purchased uh, assault rifles and he had all kind of ammo. His 18th birthday was maybe a week or just a, maybe a week before all of this happened. He shot his uh, grandmother initially first in the face. He shot her in the face and then he said he was going to go to an elementary school and do some damage over there. He did this online, by the way. And uh, that was just a horrific, horrific, these are, what, second, third, and fourth graders? I mean, we're talking about eight, nine, and 10-year-old children slaughtered. And uh, one of the teachers, one of the two teachers that was uh, also unfortunately killed, her husband uh, of 24 years, and they had been together like 27 years, shared four children together. He had a heart attack two days later. He died of grief. He died of grief uh, at the loss of his wife. And if you don't think that, uh, that, that people die of a broken heart, think again, because it does happen. This is just horrible on all levels. Of course, the 18-year-old gunman is now dead. Now there's some investigation getting into why it took so long for law enforcement officers to actually breach that classroom and may have saved uh, some additional lives. So, you know, again, hearts and prayers, thoughts and prayers to all those folks out there uh, who are gonna be dealing with this for a very, very, very long time. Shifting gears locally, uh, Memphis voters go to the polls in August. When they go to the polls, one uh, new referendum that is going to be on there is whether or not uh, we can extend term limits from two terms to three terms. This was uh, brought forth by Martavius Jones. I guess they wanted to serve some more time there on the city council. Uh, Jeff Warren, another city councilman, uh, added an amendment to that, uh, which said, well, why not just, not just include us, let's include the mayor in this. So all of a sudden, now you have uh, current mayor uh, Strickland, who is uh, contemplating whether or not uh, he would run for a third term, should it be on the ballot. Now, it's a referendum. The last two that I can remember that happened about term limit increases got shot down like like a missile going in the sky and hitting, and hitting an enemy plane. Uh, I don't think that it's going to happen. Uh, we'll talk to Otis Sanford about that a little bit later on. Um, you remember the folks uh, here at Starbucks who were uh, trying to start a union, the, the Memphis Seven as they were called? Well, they were supposed to have a union vote uh, last week, but it was delayed uh, for two weeks. It is now scheduled for June 7th. Now, hey, they've been working really hard uh, getting galvanizing folks, not, not just here, but across the country. And a lot of Starbucks folks, uh, employees from all across the country are trying to uh, maybe start some unions as well, but they sort of got pushed back. It uh, says the board which handles the union votes uh, did not inform the workers that only three of the 20 plus ballots were mailed in time for the vote. 
So they didn't even know that the that that, that the ballots had been made. Only three of them. So this is you know this 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 doesn't smell right either. But we'll keep you posted uh, on uh, on them uh, in terms of the National Labor Relations Board. Any of you decided to uh, go out of town this weekend uh, via uh, the air, airlines, for example? I mean, you know, did you hear? Did you hear that uh, there was what six, seven thousand plus eight thousand? flights that were canceled this weekend? They said, they meaning the airline said, for a number of reasons. Well, it was uh, increasing COVID cases uh, amongst the staff. And then they said it was uh, some, 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 uh, some uh, FAA issues. Then, then, they, then they got down to, to what it really was. They were shorthanded in terms of employees. So uh, there were three airlines in particular that were having some serious problems. Delta, which I don't fly anymore, United, and American. Those are the three airlines that were having some uh, serious problems with canceling flights. But here's my question. How do you not know that your flight is going to be canceled before you allow passengers to get on the plane, sit comfortably in their seats, fasten their seat belts, and then say, well, I'm sorry, our flight has been canceled uh, because of weather, because of this and because of that, so you have to get off the plane. So there are probably thousands of people all over this country uh, trying to get back home uh, at this hour because these planes and these flights keep uh, getting canceled. Now, as far as Memphis is concerned, so far, so good. Only two cancellations here in Memphis. So far, let's keep them fingers crossed because I'm leaving town at the end of the week. And I'm, I don't need to have any delays in that particular process. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there was... I don't know, I thought there was something else I was going to talk about. But in any event, uh, that's kind of a, an overall covering of, of where things are. But I got to tell you something. Th this situation that happened on the, on the streets for me a few minutes ago is a little unnerving because it happens too often. We see stories about it every day. You know, they're, 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 they're doing with a drag race in here in the, in the middle of the street. They have no regard for anybody. They have no regard for safety. So I have to ask where the law enforcement is. A few months ago, the mayor, not the mayor, the governor of this state made a big deal by saying there were gonna be 20 Tennessee Highway Patrol troopers, specifically on our highways, 240, 40, wherever, um, patrolling and trying to slow down this speeding, trying to slow down this distracted driving and everything else. I don't know where they are. I haven't seen any of them lately. So it, Lola said the same thing, Nicole said the same thing. So I worry about my folks out here. It's tough. It's tough. It really is. Uh, but we're going to uh, listen. We're going to get into the broadcast here. And uh, see, Ashley Housley is uh, House Housley. Yeah, Ashley is watching us, as is Stephen Holly and Marty Miller. And Ashley says, happy birthday to all fellow Geminis. So you're including me in that, right? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This is Real Talk Memphis for a beautiful Monday. I am Chip. We will be right back. Hey, Justin, how you doing? Oh, unmute yourself. That's the same for 2020. <laughs> how you doing, man? Good to, good to see you. Pretty good. How you doing? I'm doing great. Listen, we're in commercial break. When we come back, you and I are going to talk, okay? okay? Stand by. All right, Sam. Come on now. You know we couldn't honor Memphis music without showing our love to the innovators from the Bluff City who left their influence on Southern hip hop. WYXR Stereo Session presented by Minfo and Next Air returns with our celebration of The Antidote, the 1994 LP by NLG and Lil Blunt. The Memphis rap album was released on Luke Records, home of the legendary Two Live Crew, and serves as one of the world's earliest entrees into the Memphis rap sound that remains as pervasive as ever in today's musical landscape. Pull up and listen with us with special guest DJ Just Born in the Memphis Listening Lab, June 15th at 6 p.m. RSVP required for admission. Visit WYXR.org for more details. This stereo session is sponsored by Tone, the Memphis Listening Lab, Orion, Humanities Tennessee, and Via Productions. 
or WYXR comes from Focal Point. Located in Crosstown Concourse, Focal Point is a Southern College of Optometry clinical facility that offers exclusive designer eyewear lines and eco-friendly frames, which meets the needs of patients who value style, customized fits, and a personalized approach to their eyes. Learn more at focalpointcrosstown.com. They don't know you're The next round of our collaboration beers with Crosstown Brewing Company is ready. Take a walk down the tart end of the street where soul music meets a fruity and flavorful sour beer with notes of pineapple, peach, and apricot. We're celebrating the release of the beer with the party at Crosstown Brewing Co. Featuring a mash and mix of music by me, DJ Bizzle Blue Bland. See you there Friday, June 3rd, 5 to 7 p.m. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on uh, this Monday evening. Chip Washington with you, your humble host. And, uh, you know, uh, I said at the outset of the show, one of the things that I wanted to discuss before the month was over was about uh, mental health. Uh, This is Mental Health Awareness Month. And we have seen a lot of examples of uh, of of really what that entails. Uh, Naomi Judd, for one uh, example, I'm to understand earlier that uh, 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 what's the master P? Master P, is that his name? Master P, the artist? Yeah, his daughter, his daughter died uh, today. Um, and she, she had had some, she had had some issues. She had had some mental illness issues. So she, she was, you know, so uh, it's, it's tough out there, but I wanted to have somebody to come on the show, talk a little bit about all of this. And uh, I'm very fortunate to have uh, Justin Johnson with me tonight. He is the regional director of the Tennessee Su- Suicide Prevention Network. And Justin, thank you for taking some time and being with us tonight. I really appreciate it. Hey, Chip, thanks for uh, having me on and just be gl- glad to be here, especially uh, May being Mental Health Month um, and just to share about TSBN, about what we do uh, and way we can help our community here in Shelby County, uh, how to prevent suicides. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, and like like, you know, we said here recently, we've seen a lot of instances uh, where where mental health has played a, a, a role in this. Uh, and so I want to kind of zero in on 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 that, if 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 you will. I know you do a lot of work with veterans, and I know that that's a big issue with them. But it just seems, Justin, that that in the day to day that we all live and that we all try to function in, uh, the pressures are really getting to a lot of people, causing them uh, to do great harm to themselves and maybe others. Can you can you kind of walk us through a little bit? about, you know, what it is that you all see, you know, as a suicide prevention network, because it it seems like we're seeing a lot of that. Yeah. And so I think, um, sadly, we're all aware of the problem as far as like mental health uh, and uh, resources being available. Um, And so uh, I think a big piece to it and what our region does is uh, network with others is, is education. Um, education on warning signs and how to intervene with somebody um, that is suicidal. And so we offer literally uh, the month of May. Um, I made it my um, prerogative uh, to go into every single municipality in Shelby County and offer free uh, suicide prevention trainings or question or persuade refer. All the trainings that we offer are free and they're evidence based because sadly, this has happened enough in our communities uh, with suicide that we've been able to collect data and say, um, here are the best practices that you may see in somebody that may be suicidal or at risk and how to intervene and get them help. Uh, that's a very good point. So I guess my next question is, you know, how do you know unless a person reaches out uh, you know, to, to your vast network of, of folks who are willing to help? I mean, it, it just seems like it is, you know, for a lack of better way to put it, a silent killer, because a lot of folks carry the burdens um, emotionally that they may have 
And then, you know, a lot of times uh, when uh, tragedies happen, like suicides, it, 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 it's too late. But but how do you how do you how do you try to address it on the front end? You you, you talked about you know providing some training for folks uh, you know in your network. Yeah. So there's common warning signs: um, isolation, um, especially if anybody has had issue of co-occurring issues, as far as like depression, uh, moodiness, hopelessness. Um, and there's just a couple of telltale signs. But a lot of our training, we kind of go more in depth to that. I would advise somebody. Uh, maybe if you don't have time to take a training, uh, you can visit tspn.org mm -hmm. or even you can vi visit the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention Resource or American Foundation for Suicide Prevention or even um, NAMI. And they have a plethora of resources as far as uh, being able to educate yourself. If you're just joining us, we are speaking with Justin Johnson. And Justin is the regional director of the Tennessee suicide prevention network and Justin, when i was uh visiting your website i noticed that uh uh one 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 of the particular instances you were focused on was the recent uh, death of naomi judd who uh the the singer who had had um apparently had mental health issues and demons for many years and uh you know that that obviously uh you know that obviously got a lot of attention and and i would think in situations like that uh, you know, that would have to really almost be a, a calling card for you to say, you see, you know, what happened in this particular situation, you know, and, and maybe sort of diagnosed uh, some of the uh, issues that she had and sort of translate them into what people are going through today. Does that, does that, does it kind of work like that a little bit? Yeah. So uh, Naomi Judd, uh, I just know a little bit about her story, right. uh, but I do know there were some warning signs there. Um, so the best thing that we do, especially as a region, is um, would be to educate anybody. You don't necessarily have to be uh, a mental health professional, but anybody that is in the capacity to help, uh, that's who we're going after to try to educate them. If I had to sum up suicide prevention, um, it would be teaching people how to be better friends uh, to intervene yeah. of the people in their communities. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so a kind of a um, wake up call, I guess, for me, or kind of like, uh, especially for this year is, um, I live in Kyerville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, we had a very high profile incident uh, yes, recently. Yes, and so as soon as that happened, I brought it to my region and said, hey, guys, and girls, um, I can't do this on my own. This is the grocery store uh, that I go to every single week. Um, I would think that there was some warning sign that we could have recognized that would have been there. So Let's do the best we can as far as getting training, um, advocacy, um, and just resources out to the people uh, to need them. So hopefully um, we can prevent tragedies uh, of somebody uh, taking their own life. You know, what you said a minute ago is still sticking with me. You said we try to teach people to be better friends. You know, we, we, we all go through life's hustle and bustle. We all have our own issues. We all have our own concerns, our, our worries and, and stresses and things like that. But, but, uh, but um, it doesn't take long and it doesn't take much to reach out to someone, which is what I hear you saying, to reach out to someone to find out how they're doing. You know, I mean, how are things going? Is, you know, do you have anything, you know, that, 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 that's pressing on you that you may want to talk about? Talk about how important that really is, that that connection that we need to try to take time to make with other people. Yeah. And so I'll just use a, a real life story. Uh, before I came on with TSBM, before I had any formal education, uh, one of my buddies that I served with in Fallujah, Iraq, uh, one day I'm driving up from work. Um, I give him a phone call uh, through a series of conversations. He relays to me that he's uh, having issues with this post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. and also a substance uh, abuse problem. And that he, he told me that he tried to take his own life uh, in the past and was considering it again. Um, and so just being open and upfront uh, and just asking him, uh, we were able to get him help. Uh, and he was able to get treatment for his uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, but also his uh, substance abuse. And he'll tell you, um, finally somebody asking him and being upfront and saying, are you suicidal? Are you thinking about taking your own life? Made all the difference in the world for him uh, getting help. Absolutely incredible story. And as you say, that one was personal for you, but it happens each and every day. Before I let you go, uh, Justin, 
give people uh, the resource information uh, uh, that they can reach out and call someone, make contact with someone through your network or, or, or through the state of Tennessee? Okay, so this is a kind of important, especially on the media standpoint. It, whenever we talk about suicide as far as mental health, we always want to attach resources with it. Right. Uh, so two numbers you can use, 1-800-273-TALK, mm -hmm. or you can text TN to 741-741. Um, especially through this whole pandemic, we've seen more people use the crisis text line than any other line, especially yeah. our youth. Mm -hmm. uh, so always remember that one, uh, text TN to 741-741 or 1-800-273-TALK. If you're a veteran, you can press one and it will connect you to the veterans crisis line. Man, this is, this is, this is so, such a, a serious issue and it's so sorely needed you know, out here. And, and I'm very thankful uh, for organizations like yours, because there are a lot of folks um, that, that need help and it doesn't have anything to do with gender and it doesn't have anything to do with age. It just has to do with needing help. And uh, so, you know, I, I hope that, uh, you know, you and I can sort of have a continuing conversation as, you know, as, as time moves along, you know, about, the, you know, some of the things that you're seeing, some of the signs that people need to be aware of that some folks are really going through some mental struggles and things like that. But thank you for coming on a Real Talk tonight and really kind of laying it out and explaining it to us. And I hope to have you back in the future. Thank you, Chip. Take care, man. Have a good night. Appreciate it. All right. Justin Johnson, ladies and gentlemen, regional director, of Tennessee Suicide Prevention Network. And like he said, you know, this doesn't have anything to do with age. It didn't have anything to do with gender. He works a lot with the military. He was in the military. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of veterans who come home and, and just feel hopeless and helpless and useless. And, and you know, there's a lot of uh, that pressure and stress that many of us feel. Uh, he talked about COVID. COVID was, was, a, was a big trigger for a lot of people who lost jobs, who were trying to figure out how to pay bills, take care of their family. It brought up a lot of internal stresses and things like that. So please, 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 uh, if you do feel yourself um, leaning in that direction of desperation and maybe thinking about taking your life, contact organizations like the Tennessee Suicide Prevention Network. And we thank Justin Johnson for being with us. We're going to take uh, another break. And when we come back, we're going to shift gears. And if I had a cowboy hat, I'd put it on because we're going to talk a little bit about the rodeo. This is Real Talk Memphis. I am your humble host, Chip Washington. You know who you are, right? We'll be right back. Marcus, are you there? Oh, okay. Let me know when he's... Marcus? Hey, Marcus. What's up, man? What's happening? Hey, there he is. How you doing? Man, I'm great. How you doing, Tip? I'm doing fine. Listen, we're in commercial break, and when we come back, you and I are going to chat for a couple of minutes, okay? Okay, sound good. All right, stand by. The Brooks is open in Overton Park, home to Memphis Art Collection since 1916. The Memphis Brooks Museum of Art holds the largest collection of world art in the region, with more than 10,000 works spanning 5,000 years of art and cultures. Remember, every Wednesday is free and open until 8 p.m. They are a proud sponsor of WYXR. For more information about the museum and their exhibitions, visit brooksmuseum.org. You belong at the Brooks. This is Clark Ward Keys, co-founder at Crosstown Brewing Company. We are proud to be WYXR's official beer sponsor for 20 2022. Memphis music deserves Memphis beer. Working with the WYXR team has been an awesome way to support local community radio and foster a deeper connection with music while doing it. Our Instagram and Facebook pages feature all the updates regarding CBC and WYXR's frequent collaborations. Enjoy following along. Memphis Listening Lab proudly supports WYXR. They provide a curated collection of music and music history, a forum for music-related talks and performances, and a music education, appreciation, and experimentation space located in Crosstown Concourse. The lab is open Tuesday through Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can find out more information on their Instagram page at Memphis Listening Lab or on their website at memphislisteninglab.org.
Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to the Memorial Day edition of Real Talk Memphis. Uh, I am your host, Chip Washington. Very happy to have you with us and uh, very happy to have my next guest. You know, uh, a lot of all, all of us have heard of, of the professional rodeo circuit uh, and uh, don't really know a whole lot about it. I'll be honest, I've never been to a rodeo. We had a black rodeo event here in uh, Tunica, Mississippi, uh, a couple of weeks back, and I heard it was a very successful event. So I said, you know what, cowboy had or no, I need to reach out to somebody who can talk to me a little bit about, <laughs> about all of this. And uh, so it, it is with that, I please I say, please welcome our next guest, Marcus Friday. Marcus is the professional, he's a professional rodeo announcer. And, uh, you know, I've, I've heard some of his stuff. He's very, very good. Marcus, welcome to Real Talk Memphis. Hey, Chip. Thanks, man. Uh, I'm really glad to be here. Kind of looking forward to it. Absolutely that. So listen, uh, you, you know, you and I were sort of talking off air a little bit about all of this. And, and it, it seems like uh, now you're based in, in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Home of Black Wall Street. Home of that. That's it. That's exactly right. But uh, so so the advent of the Black Rodeo and it really seems to me like the popularity of it, it seems to be picking up steam. Was the show here in Tunica a couple of weeks ago? Was that the first event they have had uh, of, of that kind down there? Yeah, it actually was. Uh, Pepper with uh, Memphis in May uh, is over at uh, Paul Battle Arena there in Tunica. And uh, the guys out of Memphis, Ruthless Riders, the president's Tyrone Brown. So they wanted to bring in an all black rodeo. So with me promoting and I knew Tyrone personally, we just got together and thought we'd uh, see how this worked. And man, I thought it worked great. They already have date scheduled for next year. So everything is up and coming. So it sounds like the exposure is, is what was needed and is starting to become needed. I saw a list of, of a very uh, several events that you're going to be a part of here coming down the road. So I guess that, that sort of signals that. But, but what, what is it to, in, in, to you? And you've been doing this a long time. You've been announcing it for a long time. But what is the fascination, you know, with the black rodeo? And I, I asked the people on my my Facebook live uh, Facebook live line who were saying it's an incredible event. And Chip, you really got to go. It really is, Chip. Uh, you know, I guess it's with the fact that from the history I have been given uh, way back in the fifties when the blacks couldn't even compete in the white rodeos, and when they did let them in, they made them go after the rodeo, not in front of the crowd. So mm -hmm. today. You know, the Blacks is definitely on the rise. We're dominating football, basketball, baseball, rodeo. You know, it's really getting uh, where it needs to be. And on top of that, we've had a Black world champion in every event in professional rodeo except two, the ladies barrel racing and the team roping. Now, you know, I have a couple of good friends who are big time, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd say they were cowboys, you know, they have, uh -huh. you know, horses and they have cows, they have, you know, a lot of land and things like that. And I've been invited to the Black Rodeo event in Jackson, Mississippi, which is becoming okay. an annual event. I'm sure you've been down there as well. Yes, yes, me. I announced that rodeo. It's, 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 that thing is getting pretty big from what I'm to understand. It is, it is. It is really off the chain and that rodeo is brought to you by the Real Cowboy Association. And uh, actually what it is, man, there are several associations out there now that's yeah. all black. Uh, mm -hmm. The one in Tunica was brought to you by the Southern Soul Rodeo is what that was. I just left Nashville and got back last night from an all black rodeo there brought to you by Black Rodeo USA. So it's definitely getting big. You had a Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo Association. So the sky's the limit. If you're just joining us, we are talking Black Rodeo with Marcus Friday. Marcus is a not only a professional rodeo announcer, he's also a promoter and a producer and a, and a lot of things. And, and, but while it's on my mind, uh, I, I was looking at your at your Facebook page and okay. one of and one of the posts that you had on there, it was a fella doing a doing a little song. Uh, you know, his, his name is Dula. 
Right. Uh, yeah, and, and, and I, I don't know. Does is he, does he have an affiliation with you or the, or the rodeo in, in 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 some type, or is he just doing his thing like he's always been doing his thing? Well, actually, uh, Dula is from that Memphis area, and yes. Taiwan with the uh, Ruthless Riders brought him in. Uh, wanted to uh, get some live performances. A lot of times at the rodeo, man, I've been with Sir Charles, The Temptations, Cupid. Uh, rodeo is really bringing in a lot of live entertainment, Pokey Bear. All of them love performing at the rodeo. Pack houses is just the way things are going with the black rodeos. Man, you know, I was I, the, the reason I brought him up is because, uh, you know, I, when I was uh, planning this show, uh, I needed a theme for my for my for my broadcast. And I Go told ahead. someone someone hooked me into to doula. And I told him, I said, Dula, I don't know what I want, but I know what I like. And and the first and the first thing he sent me is the theme that I use. Now it's been two years. So if you ever get a chance to listen to the theme of this fine piece of radio broadcasting, you should, because it's Dula. Right. <laughs> he does a really, really good job. So, you know, and, and, and talking about um all of the events and, and all of the activities and 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 how this you know has has grown, uh, where do you see it in say maybe five years. I mean, you know, it's growing, it's continually growing, growing. You talk about the Rough Riders and a lot of other organizations who are holding events and putting events together and people seem very satisfied. But but, but where do you see this maybe in say five years? Hey, it, it's really getting big, man. Uh, families have little kids now performing in youth rodeos. We have African-American cowboys and cowgirls going to college on rodeo scholarships. Uh, Wait, 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 wait. Rodeo scholarships for real? Rodeo scholarship, real deal, man. Actually, it's a guy right out here in Tulsa, Stephen Rager, first African American to ever win a world title in college rodeo. So it, it is really big, man. I mean, it's gone. It's gone. It's done get out of hand. And I guarantee you, man, world champions. We have a few of them. Uh, Jarvis Demery, he'll be uh -huh. heading to the college national finals. These are African Americans that we're talking about in rodeo. Who are some of the, uh, you know, you mentioned a few of them, the up and comers and, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, this has grown on the backs of, of, of a lot of legends uh, who started this. You mentioned the Bill Pickett Rodeo. How long has Bill Pickett Rodeo been around? Uh, I believe this year is 38 years. Oh, my goodness. That uh, it's been around. Uh, I'm the official voice of the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo. My fact, they'll be coming back to Memphis come April of next year out in Germantown. So you can uh, make plans for that as well. That'll be a good one for you to come out and check out. I'm coming, man. I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited. I'm coming. Yeah. And I told yeah. and I told everybody that when I was interviewing you that I was going to interview you, you know, I see you got that snazzy cowboy hat on. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to lock into one of those cowboy hats, man. Because well, I think I look no, good in one of those. It, it's, it's all <laughs> part of it. The ladies uh, be wearing their hats. They're be yeah. looking the part. It'd be pretty women on fast horses, man. Uh, oh, black rodeo is is really real. In 1982, a cowboy Charlie Sampson was the first African American to ever win a world title in pro rodeo, and just probably about three years ago. Fred Whitfield out of Hockley, Texas, he won a world title eight times, just retired with over $3 million won. Wow, 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 wow. You, you have really taught uh, me a lot tonight. And you, and you did something that doesn't often happen with me at my age. I get, I'm getting excited. I, I'm really, <laughs> so, so you and I are going to stay in contact with each other. And yes, sir. Uh, you know, I look forward to actually meeting you down the road, you know, face, face to face, because this all sounds like a lot of fun. And, and as I said on my Facebook live uh, line, a lot of folks are talking about it and they're saying, man, this is really, I mean, I mean it sounds like, uh, and somebody said that Fred Whitfield that you just mentioned is one of uh, their favorites. Buddy Smith said that. So, okay. you know, folks, are, so folks clearly know. Uh, so, so, so the next event in, in an area that, that geographical area to us is, is what that you're going to be a part of. Well, I uh, just left uh, you said Nashville, Nashville. Right? I'll be headed to Jacksonville, Florida. Then I'll be coming back to Oklahoma for a minute. But the Bill Pickett Rodeo will be in Fort Worth, Texas, June 10th weekend. It'll okay. be live on Pluto. Pluto okay. TV. All yeah. you have to do is download the app. Don't cost a thing. You can watch that rodeo live, and you can watch top cowboys and cowgirls from all over the country. Now, back in June of last year, we went to Las Vegas, 
with the PBR and the Bill Pickett Rodeo. And that was the first time black rodeo and all black rodeo was televised on national TV. Wow, wow, man, listen, I have just really thoroughly enjoyed this. Pretty women on fast horses. I don't, know exactly why. I, don't know why I, adopt, I don't know why this one stuck in my head, but, but it's, it's stuck there. Listen, Marcus Friday, uh, I have really, really enjoyed talking to you tonight. I really have. And uh, thanks for giving us an education on the Black Rodeo. And I look forward to meeting you face to face down the road. I, I, I yeah, really and let me tell you this. Yes, sir. Last year, I had the first announcer seminar that I put on. I had... Uh, Black cowboys that came in from Jackson, Mississippi, Birmingham, all over the country, 10 people in a class. And what I'm doing is trying to bring up future rodeo announcers. So this year will be the second year, and I have more ladies that already entered the class than guys. My goodness gracious, you got it going on. be a good man. one. You got man, look, I'm 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 telling you, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to buck up my voice a little bit. People say I have man, a decent voice. I'm gonna you got that radio up. voice, yeah. radio voice, rodeo voice, it all <laughs> goes the same. You just need to know the events. Yahoo! That's all I can say to that. Marcus, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on Real Talk, man. I really enjoyed it. I look forward to you coming back on the show down the road. Okay, take care. I will, Chip. Thanks. And be safe on your travels, okay? I will stay in touch. Yes, sir. I promise you I will. All right, see you, buddy. All right, buddy. Marcus Friday, ladies and gentlemen, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And I tell you what, this is a black rodeo thing is a big, big deal and it's getting bigger. And so listen, he said he's teaching, he's, he's opening himself up, he's experienced, he's teaching classes uh, to folks who want to be rodeo announcers. And uh, so if you want to, if you want to do that, you need to go check out his page on uh, Facebook and, and, uh, and, and shoot him a note. He will respond in kind. We're going to take our final break. And when we come back, we are going to talk to the Otis Sanford. This is Real Talk Memphis. Having a good time on this Monday night. I'm Chip. We'll be right back. Thanks, Chip. Otis? Yes, it How is. How are you? I am well and glad to be here this time. <laughs> Man, I'm glad you are here this time. But you know the drill. We're in commercial breaking. When we come back, you and I are going to chat about all kinds of things, okay? <laughs> all right. Well, I'll just follow your lead. <laughs> yes, sir. Stand by. <laughs> all right. Message on his Real Talk show page, and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. I'm Chip Washington, and it's still important to get the word out about COVID-19 vaccinations to those in our community hit hardest by COVID-19. The vaccines have proven to be safe and effective. I encourage all of you to do your research, talk to medical professionals that you trust, and do what's right for you and your family. So roll up your sleeves, get the vaccine, and shut down COVID-19. Go to vaccines.gov to find a location near you. Soy Talia Palacio, y todavía es importante compartir el mensaje sobre sobre las vacunas y el COVID-19 con todos en nuestra comunidad más afectados por la pandemia. Las vacunas han demostrado ser seguras y efectivas. Los animo a todos a que se informen, hablen con profesionales médicos en los que usted confíen en y hagan lo que sea para ustedes mismos y sus familias. Así, pónganse las pilas, vacúnense y protéjanse contra el COVID-19. Vaya a vaccines.gov para encontrar una ubicación cerca de usted. For more than 60 years, Orion has been a trusted financial partner in our community. You can find out all the ways they redefine banking at orionfcu.com. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to the big broadcast on this Monday evening, Real Talk Memphis. Now, uh, before my next guest and I chat, there are very few people who earn the distinction of the 
you know, like, you know, the, the blah, 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 the blah, blah, blah. Well, my next guest is, uh, I've coined him the Otis Sanford, which means he is, he is great beyond measure. And he has uh, been uh, telling it like it is for decades. And let me see if I can remember what I said in the promo. He is a commentator. He is a, a, a um, columnist. He is a professor and he is an author. And I'm sure if you if, 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 if you've talked to him into it, he might, you know, even, you know, uh, you know, shine the car every now and again as well. <laughs> I'll joke aside. <laughs> Welcome back to Real Talk, my friend, the oldest Sanford. How are you? Chip, it's great to see you because uh, we own Zoom, but it's great to be here as well. You know, I, I I was I was I was messing with you a little bit before you know before we did this tonight, and I said, you know, I I put these little promos out, these little individual promos out on people, and I said, man, I said, you know what, you got a few people, you got a few fans in this town, sir. <laughs> you really do. Well, it's gratifying that I do. Uh, I probably got a few detractors too, but uh, it's good to have both. Yeah, absolutely that. So, so, so let's get into it a little bit. Okay. Uh, you know, you've been talking, uh, you know, about, about a lot of things that, that are going on out here in this country. And, 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 you know, one of the things that really, really bothers me, and I'm sure you and a lot of other folks is uh, the recent, uh, very tragic events of the shootings that we have seen, uh, the loss of life, uh, 31 yeah. people in the last uh, couple of three weeks uh, right. in this country, 19 of them children. And, uh, you know, what really bothers me about all of this is, you know, we always have these conversations post incidents and uh, but we live in a state that has said it's OK for a 21 year old uh, to carry a gun uh, without any kind of checks and balances or training or anything. And I know you feel very strongly about that. I absolutely I absolutely feel extremely strongly about this, Chip. I've been talking about it and I've been writing about it. Um, and I just feel like uh, our political leaders, both at the state level and at the federal level, have just let us down, yeah. let us down as a country, let us down as uh, human beings. Certainly, they have let our children down. Uh, and I, I think the last thing I said about this late last week was, you know, if only they would at least do something to show us that they care at least care or are or, or, or not completely heartless about the loss of innocent lives like these young children uh, in Texas. Uh, so yes, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very strong about this uh, and I will continue to be strong about it. Uh, I do believe something will happen uh, as a result of the uh, shooting uh, in Uvalde. I just don't think it will be a lot, but at least I think it'll be something. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I've heard people use the expression, this feels different. Well, I mean, you know, we've seen tragedy after tragedy in reference to this. And I guess because we seem so lax here in Tennessee about it. I mean, how could how could anybody not be concerned about the fact that it could happen here as it, as, as, as it could anywhere in the country? Mass murders, mass shootings are up all across the board in this country. We have over 200 and we're just not even halfway through the year. It's frightening. It absolutely is. And, and when you say it could happen here, it could happen anywhere. Of course it can. I mean, just on Friday, we had a young man who brought a gun to White Station High School. Again. Now, thankfully, there were no threats involved. I don't still don't know all the circumstances of that. But that could have easily been a person who came into the school with a gun and start shooting people. So it can happen anywhere. Uh, and so we definitely need to uh, uh, do something about it. Now, you know, Yes, this feels a little different in that there is just so much uh, fervor and anger about this one. And yeah. plus, it's an election year. Yeah. So I don't think even the, the, the Republican politicians don't want to be seen as being, being totally heartless. So there very well may be something that happens in the next week or two or three. If you're just joining us, we are speaking with the Otis Sanford uh, and uh, talking about a lot of issues that affect each and every one of us on a daily basis. And I, Otis, when I started the show off, uh, when I was coming down here tonight, I got a firsthand taste of the recklessness of uh, some of these juvenile delinquents out here driving on the highways. I mean, literally, I'm turning on the parkway from Sam Cooper, our light is green, and all of a sudden, the, the cars come racing down parkway, cutting us off driving in and out of traffic, there was a guy sitting in the window 
hanging out the window. And I was, it was almost like I was in a movie and I'm, I'm saying to myself, as I'm getting angry, this just can't be real, but it is. We are seeing to me a lawlessness in this city and in this County, the likes of which I've, I've not seen in a long time. And I guess I'm asking you, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I agree with you 100%. Um, I, there is just a level of lawlessness on every level yeah. from the worst crime that you can have, which is, which is homicide and murder all the way down to, um, property crimes and, 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 and violence, uh, violent driving, you know, uh, the police chief, uh, CJ Davis, uh, talked about this last week, uh, because, uh, she's coming up on her first year anniversary as the police chief mm -hmm. and she talked about one of the things that she really will address uh um going forward is this kind of lawless driving that we see all the time on our roadways i see it all the time yeah uh, especially with these muscle cars mm -hmm. uh, like these mustangs and chargers that are in loud muffler no muffler at all and it, and, and 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 it's reckless yeah so yes, I, I see that all the time. Uh, I am glad that she is putting some attention to it. I understand that the state uh, highway patrol uh, is adding more um, troopers to the roadways around Memphis to help with the problem as well. And I, I, I welcome that completely. Well, as you mentioned a minute ago, it is political season and we do have a big election coming up in August. And uh, I know you highlighted a couple of the races recently in uh, in one of the commentaries I read uh, in, mm -hmm. in the paper, but I want to address this 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 uh, issue that seems to crop up every few years about uh, let's uh, extend the the the, uh, the term limits. And uh, this year, I guess uh, Martavius Jones brought that up, and of course uh, Jeff Warren then said, "Well, why not?" include the mayor in with us city council folks. What do you think about that? It's been shot down big a couple of times before. Does it have a chance this time? Personally, I don't think so. Uh, I, don't, I have not seen anything in the last four years, and that was the last time yeah. voters voted on this was in November of 2018. Okay. I have not seen anything that would make the voters change their minds on this. Mm -hmm. um, if there is one thing, and it, and it might make it closer, is that Jim Strickland has said that he will entertain the notion of seeking a third term. And uh, Strickland um, is fairly popular. He won the, his reelection pretty much in a landslide. Yeah, 60 percent plus, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, 60 plus, which was yeah. the highest that uh, had been in a long time for yeah. any mayor's race uh, in this city. Uh, and so that could uh, make a difference. But I don't even think that will make a difference, Chip. Voters want term limits because voters don't want politicians at the local level. I think a lot of voters wish we had it at the federal level. Yeah. Uh, but certainly at the local level, since they have already instituted it, I haven't seen anything that will make them vote against it. So it's coming up on the August ballot. Um, I, I predict that it will go down in defeat again. Yeah, I, I'm kind of with you on that. I think, you know, you, you Two terms is, is long enough and let somebody else come in there and 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 and, and pick the mantle up and, and keep going. Absolutely. Um, one race in particular that, that has my attention is the uh, attorney general's race, or the just I'm sorry, the district attorney's race between Amy Wyrick and uh, Steve Mulroy. What's your take on that? Well, I think it's going to be the most watched race on the ballot in August. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the one race that the Republican Party in Shelby County. Uh, has said that they are going to go all in on. Uh, you know, they are not putting much focus on any other race, uh, including the mayor's race. I mean, right. I think that they probably believe that even though Worth Morgan has a lot of money to spend in that race, that uh, Lee Harris is still the favorite. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to trying to keep Amy Wyrick in that seat, Republicans are going to do uh, and spend as much as they possibly can to do that. It's going to be an interesting race because the Democrats have also staked that race as one that they want to capture. Uh, and so uh, they have put in the primary their votes toward Steve Mulroy. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting to see uh, uh, how he does. I know that Amy Warwick and her campaign are going to really paint him as soft on crime, inexperienced when it comes to criminal law. 
uh, and he will have to defend some of that. Um, but we'll see how it works. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting race. Well, I tell you what, you know, when, 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 you, when you look at the political landscape and, and, and what comes down the road and, and I don't really know, you know, but outside of that race, you know, what kind of interest there is generally, you know, in this election. It, it just doesn't feel uh, to me exciting to the voters. And of course, if we want change, we need to go out and vote. Uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, I think you may be right. I mean, uh, these kinds of elections, this will be a, a, a county general election. Uh, and and also along with that will be the state and federal primaries. Um, it, it generally only gets about 30 some percent turnout, mm -hmm. um, which is still better than what we saw in that county primary back in uh, earlier this month mm -hmm. when we only had like 11 percent turnout, which yeah, was man. atrocious. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you're right. I mean, I, I, people, unfortunately, Chip, most people don't even pay attention to any election except the presidential election. True. When they don't understand that the most important politics uh, and political races are the ones that happen on a local level. Mm -hmm. um, but there are three major races here that we need to be paying attention to. And that is, we mentioned the, uh, uh, the district attorney's race, right. uh, the county mayor's race, of course. It'll be, it'll be an interesting <laughs> one with Worth, Worth Morgan, the city councilman going up against Lee Harris. Mm -hmm. And then the third one for me is the juvenile court judge race mm -hmm. uh, with um, the incumbent, uh, Dan Michael, uh, and Tariq Sugarman, who's a city mm -hmm. court judge. Mm -hmm. There's a big effort among Republic, uh, Democrats in the city uh, to make a change over there. And so I'm going to be watching that race very closely as well. Well, you know, we depend on you and, and we believe in you. And we know that uh, when you have something to say, we like to listen. And Otis, thank you again for taking a few minutes uh, to come on uh, our show tonight and uh, educate and enlighten us. You know, I truly enjoy it. And, you know, I'm going to have you back in the future. Uh, well, I know so I you are. You, <laughs> and you know, I'm probably going to say yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Otis, thank you so much, man. We'll All right. Thank you, Chip. Real. It's always good to talk to you. You too, my friend. Thank you so much. All right. Otis Sanford, ladies and gentlemen, what a way to wrap up a really, really good program on this last Monday in uh, June, uh, May, excuse me. Uh, and as Lola plays us out of here, uh, again, thank you to all my guests uh, who came on tonight, and Justin Johnson and the Marcus Friday, and of course, the Otis Sanford. Uh, by the way, we have over 400 members of the Real Talk Memphis radio show fans page. Thank you to each and every one, over 400 members. So now we got to keep climbing, right? Because the, the more voices we have, the more things we can do. Thank you for uh, watching here on Facebook Live. Harriet Waters, Johnny Curran, James McKenzie, Buddy Smith, uh, Mike Henry, and all of you others who I don't see, but I feel you out here. And if the Lord says so, we'll be back next week. And we'll try to, no, I'm sorry. We won't be back here next week. I'll be off next week. We'll be back in two weeks. I'll remind you. You know how I am. I'll remind you. Anyway, for uh, Lola and for Nicole, for all of us here at Real Talk Memphis, thank you for being with us. I'm Chip, and I'm out, and we will see you soon. Have a great week. You be safe out there.